So, you want to swap your Quirt Z to Quirt E or a Zerd E, and you want to go through all the trouble and hassle to make one letter change. This is what I have to do. Um, there's other methods to do it. This is just one method to do it. They have special jigs or uh, soldering gauges. You can take the bars out, leave them in. You can attach it here. You can use shims. And today we are going to use the shim method because to, to put the jig on, you got to take everything off and then you got to test it. You got to put the whole, take it off and then put the platen back in to test it. And then if something's wrong, then you got to redo the whole setup again and then retest it and put the, so it's just like this whole, I'd rather just retest it with the thing on the, on the thing and the thing, if you get my drift. This is a super impromptu video. I wasn't planning on recording it, but I had requests to do the shim method for some other uh, Discord members. And today we're working on this wonderful Voss 50, and it is a great typewriter. It is so good, in fact, that I went and found my very own. This one is not mine. This one is in really good condition, so hopefully the one I get will be in equally great condition. But it is getting a Quirt Z swap, and it has a new platen in it. And like I said, I already started the process. I did one swap just to kind of like get, get my mojo rolling. So I got the Z in. Yeah, Z is in, and we're doing fine. So we're gonna put you in the stand. I'm gonna show you a couple other things that I, that I need. I think I have a video up of removing the slugs, and that's just a simple thing. You take the torch to it, and then you use the hemostats, and you connect the hemostat, and then you pull the slug, and then you pull the slug. And that is the easy part, because taking things apart is always the easy part. It's the putting it back together in the right way that is the difficult part. So you're gonna need a few things if you're gonna do a silver soldering project like this, you're going to need your solder paste because the solder that we use is silver bearing solder and it is not flux core, so it doesn't have any sort of bonding, promotion, adhesive agents. So that's what you need to, to do first. Then you've got this metal brass sheets you can cut into shims i use a 0 0.005 stock you can get these on amazon i find these are pretty decent um, it fits in most of the slugs that i've worked on but bill rhoda at philly typewriter has pre-made packages of type slug shims that you can order from him and i was ordering from him for a while but i was doing so many of them that i ran out and so i just decided to buy a stock sheet and cut my own because I'm gonna need more. If you're just doing one job, you know, order from Bill, he's got you covered. So I'm gonna put you in the stand and we're gonna kind of go through the process. I probably should have set up a different stand because you guys are gonna be far away. All right, guys, hold on. I'm gonna put up a different stand here. Bear with me. Like I said, this was an impromptu video, so it might be long. I'm gonna get this stand going. Hopefully I don't kick off the camera with the, the uh, volume button. stand well, let's see if we can set you up into a position where you can hear me and see me without getting too much in the way yeah I'm gonna get some things are gonna have to be in the way it's just the way it is it's tight tight space I don't have an overhead camera set up like a Dwayne Jensen so uh, you pulled your slugs you soldered them off you need you need to uh, make sure that the, the new slug or the, the, the slug you're swapping is free of any old solder. So I put the old slug or the slug that I removed in the hemostats and I proceed to heat it up with the torch. It doesn't have to get red hot, but you'll see the, the solder start to melt in there and around the sides. And then what I'll do is I'll just shake it out. Don't, don't fling out, that's why I use the hemostats, they lock, but still, you're just trying to shake out any of the old dried solder that's in inside there inside the taco so we'll set that aside to cool down because it is going to be very very hot uh, the next thing i do you can do that to the tight bar itself you're going to have to get get this prepped and get the old solder off of it 
you can melt it off or I can go at it with the, the Dremel really quick. And that's what I'll do. Okay, so now that we have this cleaned up, there's no slug on it, we have to go make a shim for it. So I cut a strip of that shim stock that I have. And what you're gonna do is, this stuff is, is kind of thin, it'll cut with regular household scissors. You're gonna cut a, a pretty decent sized square. I'll show you here cut it and make sure it doesn't fall I think with these slugs I need two because they're super loose you can you can double up your shims you can cut them in half you can uh, you can shim it how you like you can shimmy and shimmy give it a shimmy but these are the two shims that I'm gonna use right now okay and that's about the size I use and if any is sticking out I can always go back and trim it or I can dremel off any of this stuff that's sticking out on the on the ends after the process so you have your shims cut what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold them into a u-shape or like a taco see can you see the shim is now a u-shape and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your, your slug that you want to solder and you're gonna slap it in there I'm looking through the camera lens stick it in there get in there okay one shim is in there see there's a little shim it's a little long but that's all right you know like, like i said you can grind it off with the with the dremel if it's causing issues but the solder will stick to brass and it won't stick to any aluminum i tried aluminum cans when i was poor and not not doing so let's see i'm gonna fold this other shim into like a taco shape v-shaped and then i'm gonna fill up the rest of the cavity on the top half with the shim so now i've got shimmy action all the way through the slug and that should be enough to hold the bar hold the slug to the bar without it falling off because if you don't have a shim what's going to end up happening is is you're going to put this on here and it's going to slide around and any kind of movement on this thing, forward, back, side to side, up and down, it's all gonna translate onto the paper. And you need something to hold it there, that's why you have the jig or the shim. And uh, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Okay, so we'll put the shim on here, or we'll put the slug on here. We'll just kind of wedge it on there, and kind of get it matching up with the other guys. Look there, there. Okay, so it, it doesn't match up well enough. We're gonna squeeze her on there. It looks like it's a little high. So what I do is, uh, if it's if it's on there pretty tight with the shim, I'll use a brass hammer, like a watchmaker's hammer, and I'll use that to to, to tap it down just a little bit. It looks like we're we're pretty close visually to the other type bars that that's surrounding it. It might it, it might be a little high. I'll just go back at it. All right, we'll try that. Okay, so now we got a good start starting point. You can see it's it's off. It's not correct. Um, what you're going to do now is you're going to use an H or any other key that you would like. I'm just going to the paper here. And then you're going to go to your Y and you're not going to flick it with the keys. You're going to use your hand and you're going to press on the back of the slug and try to get an imprint on it. And you're going to see it print on the paper there. And it's pretty good. We, we, did, we eyeballed it pretty closely. Okay, you see there the Y and the H. But you see how the bottom here, the tail, is cut off? That's because the slug is leaning too far forward. So the bottom tail, uh, it's pushed backwards too far. So we need to grab that and then bring that front of that tail out towards the platen or straighten, up, straighten it up. So that way we get a clear and crisp imprint all the way through the printed letter. 
So I'm gonna go back, visit my key here. Try to see if I can't manipulate it so it's that tail is sticking out just a little bit, sticking out more towards the front. And then what we're gonna do is repeat the same thing. We can hit our H, because the H is a good baseline. And then we'll take our Y and we'll slowly bring it up and we'll tap it onto the paper. And that's pretty good. I think I've, I've moved it up a little when I was messing with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap that down, make sure I didn't, didn't move anything. Okay, so I don't know you guys, can you see it? I'll zoom in, can you see? Zoop, it's pretty good. We got the tail. It's, it's pretty much in line, so we're gonna start doing another test. We're gonna H, and then we're gonna do it again. Just to make sure we're good. And that's pretty good. I would, I would call that good for a swap. Hopefully I'm not getting my ugly mug in the, in the camera here. I'm just gonna bring it out a little bit more. I think pushing on the slug is, is pushing it back into the into the thing a little bit. So I think we'll call that good. We'll do, let's do one more test because I'm playing with it. I'm just being a perfectionist now. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. We're gonna call that shimmed and, and locked in position. See, it's, it's sitting there like that. So now that we have it shimmed, and it's not going to slide up and down. Oh, is that what I was talking about before? Gravity. Sorry, I have eight, maybe I have ADHD. Um, gravity will, if you don't have the shims there, gravity will make that shim just fall everywhere. And it also, when you go to solder, if you make any kind of like movements with the, the soldering iron or the, the gun, the, the, the flame or the solder touches it, it will just... It'll, it'll throw off your, you need this to be completely solid and set to where you're going to solder it in. So we are ready to solder. I'm going to lock it in with the hemostats. And then what I'm going to do is hopefully not burn the house down. When I first started doing this, I burnt up a lot of ribbons because you have to go straight. If you're using a, a torch like this, it's way quicker, but uh, you have the the chance to melt the ribbons and yeah just be be advised you do this method at your own risk soldering irons work they take a long time you heat it up and you have to sit there and wait for the, the heat to soak through the whole part but the torch will get it done really quickly just make sure you're going straight up and down on it like this and you're heating it up so um, i'm going to get my flux remember we talked about that that flux and i've got a little flux brush with some goo on it I'm going to goo up the tip of the, the flux brush, get some nice goo going, and then I'm going to heat up this slug, and I'm going to touch it up with some of that flux. And you could do this uh, um, with the slug off as well, just to get it in there, but it, it pretty much flows out. And you'll see when I solder, you, this these this slug and the way that I have it shimmed, it has a pretty good flow out. So when I introduce the solder through this top, you see that little tiny top hole right there? You'll see the solder start to, to, to goop out from the bottom here. It'll, it'll come out the bottom, it'll come out the sides, it'll flow out. And that's, that's good, because you want to have a good seal, have it all the way around. You can use electronic solder, tin, tin lead solder. Um, I don't know how strong it is, it's not meant for like, repeated use of slamming around so the silver bearing solder is a little bit stronger uh, experiment what, what's gonna what's gonna happen you're gonna have to redo it you know? welcome to welcome to earth disappointment and redoing things so we're gonna heat up this slug now and we're gonna get our solder ready and once it gets to a good melting point we're gonna introduce some solder to it and you can see uh, it flowed out on the other side here. I don't know if it flowed out on the other. Oh, yeah. Let's turn this off because it's pretty much set. Uh, I'm going to take the camera and flip it around this side. You can see the solder. It flowed out on this side. Normally, it'll flow out on both sides, but this is more. 
this side. And when it's hot, you'll probably want to knock that off before it, it cools. You have, you have kind of a lot of time to, to mess with this stuff. Oh, I just introduced some temperature change, so it is now stuck on there. So I'm going to put you back down, and I'm going to melt off that little nubbin. And if there's too much nubbin, we can we can grind it off with, with the Dremel. But we'll just nub it off. With the, oh yeah, there's a little bit of flow out on there. But this will stay hot for a long time, so you want to let it cool down enough because you don't want to start typing on it uh, when it's hot because you'll just knock off the whole alignment. So what I'm going to do is carefully try to aim this heat into that stupid blob that flowed out, get it hot enough that I can clean off any... Oh my gosh. Let's see. I'm doing this other-handed because I'm, I'm left-handed, guys. Don't blame me. Alright, we, we got the blob off. And the soldering jobs can be messy because if you're new at this and you start going through a lot of solder, uh, because it, it happens, you gotta practice somehow. You gotta, when I, I have a practice machine and it's so full of solder from just solder just falling down and getting everywhere. It's, it's a mess. And you gotta be careful because solder will stick to the stuff down inside there. It'll stick into the bars, into the linkages. So after you're done with all this, you're gonna have to go through and make sure there's no solder stuck to any of the linkages, no solder stuck in any of the slots. So I'm gonna use a little uh, human lubrication. And pss, 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 pss. if you can hear that, it's still super hot, guys. I've been talking so much, I don't have any water. Let's put some, we'll put some rubbing alcohol on it. Now, it's still hot, but I think the, the solder is set. It's set enough that we can we can test it out. So H, oh, it didn't work. You hear that? Maybe it's, is it just rubbing on the, there might be some interference with solder on the side here. So what I'm gonna do is grind out this solder blob on the side. Make sure that what we're working with is just the uh, blob. There it goes. Cool. So as you can see, we have this ribbon is dead, by the way. Just to let you know, this is a the, the guy sent it from Germany without din spools, and German machines use uh, din spools. So I, all I had was the silk ribbon from the 40s. So I think once we get a new ribbon in there. all good I think that will be good but that's how you guys set your shims and now I'll, what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll because it has some scarring from the, the heat I'll, I'll take a wire brush to it and I'll touch it up and I'll clean up anything that makes it look ununiform so I, I made it look easy guys and believe me I just did the Z before I did the Y and I soldered it and it set and I went and tested it and it was wrong so I had to unsolder it and do it again. And then I let it set and it was wrong. So I had to unsolder it, clean out all the old solder or you know, all the old new solder that I just put in there, redo it again. And that's the reality of it. Like this was, this was lucky. Maybe it's because I took 20 minutes and explained it step by step and I set it up super slow. But if you imagine 20 to 30 minutes per slug doing it this way, one swap I did on a Royal that, that needed cursive, that I wanted to put cursive on, it took me six hours because that was my first, one, it was my first typewriter I did like this, but six hours to solder all of the, the slugs and it still looks horrible because it's not even, I, I just kind of threw them on there. It works, but it's not pretty. This one, it's not for me, so I have to make it presentable. Anyway, as uh, sum it up, it's very hard. It's very tedious. Do it at your own risk. Uh, 
it takes practice and I'm not good at it at all. I, I, I'll be the first to admit it'll take me hours. People are like, oh yeah, I did it in 20, 20 minutes. That's all. No, maybe if you've been doing it 20 years, I've been doing this. This is like my seventh, eighth swap I've done. And like I said, I got lucky. So you need a $25 torch, you need an $8 jar of flux, you need a $10 roll of that, you need a $10 sheet of this or shims from the guy, some hemostats, some screwdrivers, some pokies, a dremel. You need the whole spiel, the whole thing to do it, to do it right. It's going to take time, a whole lot of precious time. As Mr. Harrison once told us. Anyways, if you want to learn how to take off a slug, it's really simple. Look at my other video, but I'm going to call it here because we went 20 whole minutes. And I know you guys probably don't like to watch people working on typewriters for 20 minutes. But we'll get this cleaned up and we'll get this back out to the, the customer. And oh yeah, I forgot. Duh. You got to swap the, swap the letters and I got a tool for that. This one is kind of different than all the others, and that's a that's a tricky job in and of itself too. Because if you put the wrong pressure on there, you're going to break glass tops. You're going to break the thing, and it, the worst case, which has happened to me before, you'll break the whole button off of the stem. Like if you put any kind of twisting motion on the the, the tool, you're going to have a bad time. And when you do that good luck you're gonna have to solder and silver solder this button back on and if you if you if you're leery about swapping the caps go ahead and just leave it and know that you have your y swapped how you want it uh, royal caps are pretty easy to get off by hand this one i've never done the boss it doesn't have tabs on the bottom it's just press fit in there and i think the tool that i have has a special for it but I am going to be very careful because I don't have any <clears throat> replacements for this it's a it's a boss 50 it's all it's an all bakelite or plastic machine but let me tell you this is probably one of my favorite typewriters I've used in a long time but what am I talking about all right guys work on your typewriters if you have any questions let me know like I said, this isn't the definitive be-all, end-all of how to do typewriter repair on my channel. This is just self-taught stuff that I've gone through the motions and messed up a whole lot and got to where, where I kind of can, can get these out to people. So, enjoy. Hope you can learn something. If you have any questions, talk to me.